Orbs are spiritual beings. Spiritual beings. Spiritual beings. I'm so scared. I nearly dropped my pint. Greetings, tubadors. Well, that intro pretty much gave the game away, didn't it? So, this time, a field that I have been interested in since I was very, very young. The paranormal. And a field that I've, I take flack over, you know? I'm, I'm known um, particularly on, on YouTube and in various, you know, Facebook pages and other online forums of, uh, you know, being the, the sceptical mind, you know? But I like to question things. But, you know, the paranormal is a weird thing. Um, why do I consider myself qualified to speak on this subject? Well, I've been a member of several paranormal investigation groups going as far back as 1984. Um, some of them coming from the more sceptical side, which is exactly uh, my cup of tea, that's right where I live, um, to the more ridiculous groups uh, where the members think that everything that happens after it gets dark is you know the business of satan and, and all his little wizards um due then to the 35 years or so that i've spent within the paranormal community on and off i've probably spent more time in some of the uk's most haunted or reputedly most haunted places uh, than most people um i have reviewed literally thousands of hours of EVB recordings. Um, I've probably looked at thousands of hours of, you know, night vision video recordings. I've read hundreds of books on the subject. And just in case anyone requires citations for my public experience in the field, I've acted as an advisor on the subject of paranormal investigations for uh, the BBC, BBC Wales, Radio Wales, ITV, um, Antics Productions, the people that make Most Haunted, dozens of digital TV shows, and I've been interviewed on radio and TV more times than I can remember. So, a reasonably solid body of experience within the field. So, what have I learned over all these decades? Uh, that about a good 95% of all reported paranormal phenomena can usually be explained by a reasonably experienced investigator in the first three minutes. Um, the next 4% after that, after a decent investigation. Now that leaves 1%. And we'll leave that 1% there because as skeptical as I am, um, in amongst the sort of, you know, the creaking floorboards, um, you know, the noisy old plumbing, um, mice scurrying through the walls, I have seen and heard some very weird shit. Um, but the one thing that I have learned over all the years is that if you're going out on a paranormal investigation in a very dark location, then... Always buy the biggest mag light in the shop. But enough of this willy waving. Now, what is the paranormal? Well, it is a vast subject. Um, para comes from the Greek, meaning you know beyond or, or distant from. Um, so paranormal means you know beyond normal. Uh, but it's you know it's a massive umbrella title. It's been used uh, to cover everything from from ghosts and. Um, electronic voice phenomena, um, Bigfoot to UFOs and just about everything above, below and in between. But today, as you will probably already have gathered, we'll be taking a look at these things. Orbs. Now, anyone who has watched any of the frankly embarrassing so-called paranormal TV shows. I made a million dollars out of making shit up. We'll be familiar with these orbs, um, strange little you know, balls of light that show up occasionally on video and, and you know, more often in still photography. Um, that was certainly not there or certainly not visible to the naked eye when the footage or the stills were taken. Now, the phenomena of these orbs 
first came to the attention of photographers and shortly after to paranormal investigators in about the early 1990s. Now, we'd never seen anything like these before when they started to emerge. Um, there were lots of theories running around. Was this a new manifestation of spirit activity? Um, with the advent of digital, digital technology, had the spirit world finally discovered a way to categorically make their presence known? Um, as you might imagine, the more, shall we say, enthusiastic investigators uh, immediately claimed them to be, you know, spirit manifestations, um, as most of them still do to this day, uh, to be honest. Uh, now, mediums, they clamped on to the, the orb phenomena and started to use it as, um, you know, absolute proof of, uh, of their ability to conjure spirits. Um, the Space Brother Crystal Pixies, uh, they, they even invented an entire catalogue of colour coding so that these true believers could I identify the mood of the spirit that they were encountering. Um, uh, peach colour was uh, was a comforting spirit. Um, orange was a healing spirit. Pilot blue, whatever pilot blue is, uh, was a shielding spirit and so on and so forth. Uh, books were written on how to attract them. Sci-fi stories written about them. Um, People were told how to photograph them, how to interact and communicate with them, how to decipher their meaning, how to get them to work for you, how they generate their energy, all manner of nonsense. Was put about, out about these things. In fact, until about the early 2000s, they were pretty much the number one piece of evidence that people used as proof of the paranormal but they haven't always been known as orbs. They used to be called... Dust! That's right, folks. Dust. Uh, or water droplets. Droplets, um, ice crystals, bugs, uh, or any of the millions of microscopic a -bone particles that float around us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Now, the reason they weren't a thing until the early 90s is because of camera design. Prior to 1990, all cameras had to be loaded with film. Now, many of us will remember having to take those films along to the chemist or down to Snaps in town, dropping them off and collecting the prints a few days later. Or if you were feeling, you know, a little bit flush, um, you'd bung the shop an extra £1.50 and you could go back and pick them up in an hour. Now, in 1990, this appeared on the market. The Kodak DCS-100, the world's first commercially available digital camera. It had a massive 1.3 megapixel sensor and the batteries and the 200 megabyte memory were carried in a separate shoulder pack. In 1990, this pinnacle of imaging technology would have set you back about $20,000. And now in today's money, that's about $37,000 or 31,000 um, pounds. Less than a thousand were sold, but it paved the way for digital cameras to become the everyday objects that 99% of us have today, incorporated into our mo mobile phones, most of us. Oddly though, Kodak, they didn't think the digital camera would catch on. Um, and that was a mistake which very nearly bankrupted them. Anyway, the thing about digital cameras that sets them apart from film cameras is that they are prone to retroreflection, or as it's more commonly known, backscatter, um, especially compact cameras. Now, due to the proximity of the lens to the flash and compacts, foreign particles within, what, I don't know, two or three centimeters of the lens are more than likely to reflect light, which will capture onto the sensor. Now, 99% of these captures will be slightly out of focus and will present as orbs of light. Now, DSLR cameras are less prone to this due to the increased distances between the lens and the flash. Um, particles of dust will appear almost exclusively as uh, in grey or white, um, but particles of water will act as micro lenses reflecting the flash and give those captured, you know, orbs um, various different colours. Um, bugs will sometimes appear um, but usually just as bugs, uh, despite the insistence of the true believers. Um, 
In fact, for a more detailed description of the dynamics behind orbs in digital imaging, you should take a look at a cracking article um, by a bloke called Alan Murdy called Orbs and All Mystery. I will put the link to that uh, in, in the description below. Now, despite the, the, the mass of not just evidence, but absolute proof as to the true nature of the orb phenomena, as is always the case in the world of the paranormal, there will be many, many people who simply refuse to believe the logical and truthful explanation. Um, most of them in favour of maintaining and then sort of perpetuating the absolute nonsense that they are heavily invested in. Now, just like your common or garden flat earther, they choose what to believe um, in spite of the myriad of evidence to the contrary, simply because their own personal little unicorn filled fantasy world is a far more interesting place if it has glowing orbs rather than reflected particles of dust. Now, this spectrum rated fantasist uh, who goes by the name of Sasha is a, a prime prime example of these people who just be people who just believe what it suits them to believe. Now, Sasha here is a medium. Ooh. Sasha is in contact with the spirit world and believes himself to be a very powerful medium because of the number of orbs that he attracts. Uh, the spirits actually helped me to open my third psychic eye even more. Uh, therefore, I'm even more powerful. I'm able to see the past, present and the future even more clearly with the help of spirits. See, there are many orbs in this room. I can see all these orbs, and orbs are obviously the first sign of a spirit manifestation. It would appear to me that the less time you spend dusting your home, the more powerful your powers of orb summoning become. Now, I picked Sasha out of the pile simply because his was in, you know, the first three videos that floated to the top when I, I did the search for orbs. But there are literally thousands of people on YouTube, um, individuals and groups, proclaiming that these bits of dust and the other particles of mundane detritus that, that float around the place are some kind of sentient entity trying to make contact. Now, in comparison, there are very few of these uh, paranormal channels that are actually recognizing the true nature of what it is they're seeing. And of those that do mention the dust aspect of orbs, the majority state that not all orbs are dust. Some even claim to be able to show which are dust and which are paranormal, which of course they can't. Now, all my years in the field of paranormal research and investigation suggests that whilst inexplicable things very occasionally do happen, I have never seen anything to suggest that it's the spirit of the dead manifesting in the shape of these orbs. Um, the paranormal by its definition is unknown in nature. And if you don't know the nature of something, you can't devise a test to detect it. And you can't describe the nature of anything detected since the phenomena you're describing is of an unknown nature. And round and round and round it goes. Um, the only thing it proves is that 90% of woo-woo merchants will make up anything to explain something they don't understand as long as it's exciting and allows them to vainly justify standing in a graveyard with a flashing box that they bought off eBay for 130 quid. But enough of this nonsense. I am sure that they will be Many people who leave comments down below this video, um, all of them, or not all of them, but a good few of them, desperately proclaiming that these are spirit entities come from another dimension to bring us peace and love and light and crystals. And I'd be more happy if they brought me, you know, a pint of Guinness. I would be well happy if they did that. Uh, anyway. As I say, enough of such nonsense. If you've managed to get this far, thank you very much. If you're subscribed, a very special thank you to you. It's people like you who make these channels grow. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do consider clicking the, uh, the little subscribe button and give a little tickle to Thor down by there and you will be subscribed. Um, click the bell notification. YouTube will send you an email on my behalf letting you know when I have next uploaded a video. So, until the next time, thank you again for watching. Please be well, be safe, be nice to each other, and I will catch you next time. Until then, holva.